And we're back with some more Western Michigan Broncos franchise mode in FHM9. And in this one, we have the second part of year number four, including the verbal commitments, which we will get to right now. And there you go. We got the first pick in the draft. We stole it from Bowling Green. Myron Arthur should be pretty good. He's got that five-star potential, at least according to the consensus. We don't know exactly what it is. And here we are with our nominations. So you have Mark Brooks as the best player available. 17 years of age, so he's going to be in college soon. Good defensive center, it looks like. But then again, his potential is not accurate. This guy is Mark Hearn. There's also a goaltender, Alexis Cote. And then there's Alex Pegamagabo. That's quite the name. 17 intelligence, too. Good puck handler, good determination. Yeah, I'll try for a Pegamagabo here. Come on. Yeah, nice. Oh, here's Mark Brooks. He's been nominated by Merrimack. Uh, nope. Okay. Oh, we got one. Michael Genovese stole him from Princeton. So we have three players already in the top 12. I mean, he's, he's not all that great right now, but he's only 15. He's got time. So we got one on D, one at wing, and then one at center. We're filling out pretty nicely here so far in this verbal commitments stage here. How about a goaltender? No, not yet. And we just got another one, Nathaniel Green. And that is player number four in 19 picks. And there is player number five. <laughs> We're only on pick 22. Brett McCool has agreed to verbally commit to our college. I mean, I guess there's no limit to this, right? Because it's not like we're officially getting them right now. And there's another player, Daniel Buckles, also with the MTGP U17 team. There is another, John Coverdale, the center. He actually looks pretty good. He's only 15. For a 15-year-old, that's pretty good, based off what I've seen so far. This is only pick 28, by the way. <laughs> we, we still got a long way to go. So I have a feeling that I'm, I'm eventually just going to let the computer finish this because I seem to be getting players like every other pick now. And eventually it's just going to be a, a bit much, you know? <laughs> yep, there's another Jared Sharples. All right, so here's our next nomination at pick number 70. And honestly, at this point, I've lost track of how many players we've gotten. I think it's like 10 so far. Uh, okay, so it's eight. I just looked at the, uh, the unsigned list and there's eight from 2026 here. And obviously National Signing Day for 2026 hasn't happened yet. So this is indeed all the players that we have selected from Global Commitments. But still, that's, <laughs> that's quite a bit. That is quite a bit, especially this early on. And it looks like we have yet to get a goaltender out of this verbal commitment stage. So let's try to get one now. I'm going to say it's either Kote or Patrick. I think I'm going to go with Patrick. He's not only got the better goalie ratings overall, but he's also taller. The only downside to him is intelligence compared to Kote, but it's not like a drastic difference. It's 13 to 11. And his mental ratings are mostly better as well, besides determination. Yeah, I'm going to take Patrick here. Come on, Patrick. Yeah, nice. All right, next nomination. We're at 192 now. We're going to nominate Kote. There it is. He has agreed to join. And I think at this point, we've reached the point in the verbal commitments stage where I do not care about what the other teams do. So we are going to simulate up to our next nomination. That will be at 253. And to be honest, there's really not much left that I'm interested in in general. So I think we're just going to let the computer finish the nomination. And here's a list of all of our verbal commitments. We've got quite a few here. Pegamagabo, Petrick, Arthur, Cote, Genovese, Sharples, Coverdale, Green, McCool, Buckles, Mullins, Odenier, Jensen, Potiat, Gagnon, Gordon, Vey, Bruce, and Ware. So I think with that being done, we could just get up to the end of the regular season here. As we are still in a pretty good spot, we're 11-5-2. Check Team Harmony. Yep, we're good. We're all good here. So it doesn't look like there's any reason to worry. Goals for per game, we're up there in fifth in the league. Goals against per game, we are up there also fifth in the league. Face-offs, we're first. The only area that's really not great is the power play, but literally everything else is basically top of the league, so... I have no issues here, and it's not like we could do anything to fix the power play anyway, considering that at this level, rosters are essentially set for the year, right? So, yeah, I think we'll just advance up to the pre-NCAA tournament bracket. All right, Samuel Soland has finally returned from his injury. He's only played eight games so far this season, so it'll be good to get back in there. He's a senior, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he is a senior, so it's unfortunate that his final year in college was cut short, but hopefully we can have a good playoff run to make up for it. And Ozer Lynch is finally back as well, so our defensive core slowly starting to repair itself. So we are now on March 8th, which means it is the end of the regular season, and we finished 23-7-4 and with 50 points on the season as we check the standings we did finish first in the nchc 
with 50 points. So now let's check out the stats. In goal, you have Bruveris in 20 games played with five shutouts and a 918 save percentage. And Hamblin, 14 games played with the three shutouts and a 914 save percentage. So both goaltenders did very well. On defense, you have Davidson with 21 points in 34 games played. Cardona with 20, 12 for Stenger and D'Alessandro, 7 for Sjoland in 17 games played, 8 for Kroll and Zap, 5 for Ozelinch in 5 games played, and Raddy with 3 and 11. Now, obviously, Zap and Raddy are normally forwards, but we had to switch them to defense for the time being, given the amount of injuries we have. And at forward with 31 points each, you have Tetaranko and Linfors. Tetaranko in 34 games and Linfors in 30 games played. Ten Ling with 28, Ketanen with 26, 25 for Gunn. Sick, Zinchenko with 15, Brooks with 15, 13 for Izagai, 11 for Portillo, 10 for Conrads and Kelvgard, 9 for Smith, 8 for Lemeshevsky, Stenman and Person, 6 for Holchak, Yuntorp and Grenier, 4 for Doucet and Risto, and sinking in with 3, Lundberg with 2. And team stats, we are 6th in the league for goals for per game with 3.71. And goals against per game, we are 1st with a 1.94. Face also 1st with a 56.3. Power play yeah, got a little better. We're at a 16% now. We're at 13%, I believe, before. And penalty kill, we are 1st with a 92.9. So with that, let's get to the NCHC playoffs. And the first round of the NCHC playoffs, we will be facing Nebraska Omaha, who are 11, 22, and 3. We are 23, 7, and 4, so... Safe to say we have at least a record advantage here. So here we go. First period underway. And there's one towards the end of the first period. Adam Cardona with the goal from Linfors and Tetarenko. We are up 1-0. And in the second period, a goal by Ozilinch from Katzenin and Cardona. We are up 2-0 now. And there's another one. Sikkanen from Risto makes it 3-0 on the penalty kill. Third period underway. And there's another one. Daniel D'Alessandro makes it 4 nothing. And Dovar Tindling makes it 5 nothing from Katzenin and Zinchenko. And that will be all she wrote for this game. Easy game number one in these NCHC playoffs. The shots were 27 to 19 in favor of Western Michigan. Three stars of the game, Cardona, Ketanen, and Tetarenko. All right, here we go. Game number two, you have Colorado College this time, who are 12, 19, and three. So here we go, first period underway. And there's the first of the game, Elias Stenman from Person and Kroll. We're up one nothing, and that was on the penalty kill as well. Seemed to be really good offensively on the penalty kill so far these playoffs. There's a goal for Bogosik from Brooks and Tinling, up two nothing now. And there's one for them, the first time we've been scored on in this pre-playoff tournament. Goal by Yermakov, makes it two to one, halfway through the second period, and there's one for us. Barrett Brooks from Kroll and Zap, we get it back, and we are headed into the third period with a two-goal lead. And there's one for Lemeshevsky from Connors and Kelgard and Barrett Brooks. There's 5-1. Dovar Tinling from Linfors and Gojcik. Okay, th there's a goal for them. Coring. But Gojcik answers right back from Tinling and D'Alessandro. We are up 6-2 to two halfway through the third. There's one for them. Yermakov is the second of the game. And there's another one for us. We're going back and forth here. Lemeshevsky was the second of the game from Holchak and Connors and Kelgard. And that'll be all she wrote for this game. We are off to the finals of the nchc playoffs shots are 45 to 33 in favor of your western michigan broncos three stars of the game are ghost tinling and brooks and the final game of the conference playoffs is your western michigan broncos versus minnesota duluth who are 22 11 and 1 on the regular season so it should be a good one here come on boys first period under the way there it is lachlan tetarenko from ketanen and ozenlich we're up one nothing and there's another one alias stenman from brooks and davidson up two nothing just like that and there's another one niels yuntorp i haven't even <laughs> i haven't had to stop my commentary here yuntorp from stenman and brooks makes it three nothing can we do it again can you get another quick goal no okay that's fine that's three goals in the first i'll take it Second period underway. And there's one for you on tour from Moselinch and Linfors. We're up 4 nothing. Now headed into the third on the power play. And nothing happened in the third, so that'll be all she wrote for these playoffs. And that means we are guaranteed a spot in the NCAA tournament. Well done, boys. Well done. Shots were 34 to 17 in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. Three stars of the game, Yuntorp, Stenman, and Brooks. And yes, indeed, we are in the NCAA tournament. We will be facing Ferris State first. Now, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if the same issue that happened last season is going to happen this season as well with the two games instead of one and on the same day, nonetheless. 
Here we go. Game against Ferris State. I'll see if we have another one after this, but I'm going to play game number one for now. Here we go. First period. And there's one for them right off the bat. Stannard with the goal. And that'll be it for the first. We're down by one heading into the second period. There's one for us. Oh, there's a Lynch with the goal from Lin Fors and Gosik. Here's another one. Spencer Smith from Yentorp and Sealand. That'll make it two to one. And I actually skipped that goal by Ferris State there, but they actually did get another one. I believe it was a McFowl with the goal there. And Lachlan Tedarenko in the third period with a goal from Sealand and Gosik. We're up by one. Come on, boys. Hold the lead. And there it is. We take this game against Ferris State. Yeah, it happened again. Yeah, there's something going on with the first round there in the NCAA tournament. I, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that. I, I don't think so because it's on the same day. I can't imagine that is the case because <laughs> considering every other round is just one game anyway. So I, wow, that's a consistent problem it seems. Shots to 36 to 16 in favor of Western Michigan. Three start of the game, Sealand, Stannard, and go sick so i wonder what will happen if i try to simulate past this like if i just disable show games if i just click continue uh okay it appears <laughs> whatever happened there it, it appears we won yeah it, it played a different game it just it, it ignored the game we just played which was which the final score was three two and instead simulated a phantom game that is four to one <laughs> and i can't i can't even view that game anywhere like it's not on the schedule it's not up here like i can't click up there and it does show right here however i can't click on this score so it's not going to show me a box score no matter what imagine if we lost that second game that phantom game we wouldn't have made it into the second round that's got to be fixed <laughs> that has to be fixed but if the pattern follows previous years that should be the only phantom game we have because i don't believe anything past the first round last year ever had a phantom game on to round number two against the princeton tigers and here we go first period underway and there's a goal for them right off the bat brendan gorman with the goal to put them up one nothing and there's another one for them makes it two nothing all right there's one for us mason stenger with the goal late in the first that's the deficit in half. And there's the tying goal. Lachlan Tetarenko from Cardonia and Ozilinch. That'll make it 2-2. And there's the go-ahead goal for Zinchenko from Ozilinch. And we now leave for the first time this game. And there's another one. Goshek from Tetarenko and Zinchenko makes it 4-2. There is another one. Maxim Lebeshevsky from Stenman and Stenger. And we are rolling in the second period. That's the end of the second. Moving on to the third now. And then the goal by Yuntorp from Smith and Lebeshevsky. We're up by four. And that is all she wrote. We are moving on to round number three. Shots are 44-30 to in favor of your Western Michigan Broncos. Three stars of the game are Ozilinch, Stenger, and Smith. So here we go, back in the Frozen Four once again, and we'll be facing the Bentley Falcons, who were 25-8-1 on the regular season. All right, here we go. Game against Bentley. First period underway. And there's a goal for them right off the bat. We, that is three games in a row where we have been scored on almost immediately in the first period. I do not like that. Goal for Tanner Adams. That gives him a 1-0 lead. Come on, answer back. Ugh. Luke Van Wy with the second goal of the game for them. And that was like, how many seconds was that apart? All right, continue the simulation. There's one for us. Zinchenko from Ketanen and Sjoland. Back within one. And there is the tying goal late in the first period by Lachlan Tetarenko from Cardona and Ketanen. And that'll send us in the second period tied. And there you go, Tim Linfors with the goal from Gostick and Tetarenko. We're up by one. And there's a goal for them. Caleb Potter gets the game tied once again. But then Brady Turner with the goal to put Bentley ahead once again. And we're heading into the third period, down by one. Come on, boys. Come on, Western Michigan. Oh, no. There's a goal for them. Uh, six to three. Uh, no, seven to three. Eight to three. Stop! <laughs> uh, and that is all she wrote. Yeah, those first two goals were 14 seconds apart, jeez. And just the absolute onslaught in the third seals the deal for Bentley. Shots were 43 to 31, so we played well. We played well in the shots department, but uh, defensively, not so much, it seems. Three stars of the game, Turner, Olsen, and Brunder. And it will be Bentley with the NCAA Tournament Championship. So they went through Boston College, Northeastern, Western Michigan, of course, and Michigan Tech. That is really unfortunate. <laughs> I thought we had a chance. We were simulating really well. So let's take a look at who is graduating this year. It looks like it is Sjoland, and pretty sure there was someone else who has already been taken off our roster, it seems. Yeah, William Hambly, for whatever reason, became a free agent just yesterday. Like, as soon as we played our last game, he said, I'm out of here. So we're down to Bruveris and Howitt 
as our goaltenders. And here we have the awards. For the Hockey Humanitarian Award, you have Liam Chapman of Bowling Green. And for the Hobie Baker, you have Cutter Gauthier, who is now a free agent, but who was previously with Boston College. And the playoff MVP is Caleb Potter of Bentley. And the Mike Richter Award goes to Benny Halaz. And the best GM goes to William Price of Bowling Green. And the best coach goes to John Page, also of Bowling Green. All right, so Mac Becca is up for renewal. We did see some success in the NCAA playoffs. I mean, we got to the third round. Two years in a row, for that matter. So he hasn't been terrible, that's for sure. I just I think I might want to see what's out there. Who the heck is this guy? Tony Hand, 58 years of age from Scotland, with some pretty decent ratings all around and is an executive, a manager, a coach, and a scout all at the same time. Okay. Offensive preference, physical preference, balanced line matching. He's got a lot of what I like here. Only thing that's really low is coaching goaltenders, but we got that covered in our goalie coach. So honestly, I think I might want to try hiring Tony Hand here, presuming he's still available on July 1st. So yeah, I'm going to reject Matt Becca for the contract extension. Unfortunately, I can't sign him now, as if I try to sign him as an assistant coach, his demand of 115000 is too high. So maybe if I wait until July 1st, then he'll sign. Because I'm pretty sure that's when your staff finances reset, right? And here's our season score. We did not get manager of the year. We did not reach the finals, but we... Wait, what? We didn't win the championship. What? <laughs> we didn't win the champion. That was Bentley. Unless it's talking about, is it talking about divisional playoffs? It must be. We won that. We won the NCHC playoffs. But the negatives category for fail to reach playoffs counts the NCAA tournament, not the NCHC playoffs. So why does win championship count for NCHC? That's... That's strange. And what's even weirder is it says it doesn't, we did not reach the finals, but we did win the championship. <laughs> so it must be that reach the finals counts only for the NCAA tournament, but one championship for whatever reason is counting the NCHC playoffs. That's uh, <laughs> that's strange. That is really strange. Seeing that we didn't, re apparently didn't reach the finals, but we did win the championship, if, if that makes any sense. Yay, yeah, 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 I've maxed out my negotiating skill at 20. So now we're going to be able to get even more players out of the <laughs> National Signing Day. All right, now that we are on July 1st, it is time to sign Tony Hand. Beautiful, we can sign him. So welcome aboard our new head coach in Tony Hand. Basically the same uh, preferences as well, besides the line matching tendencies. But I do believe he has better ratings overall than Mr. Matt Becca. Eh, actually, they're kind of even. Relatively even, actually. <laughs> yeah, besides the line matching tendency, they're almost exactly the same coach, actually. <laughs> I didn't realize that until now. They're essentially the same type of coach. They even have the same coaching goalie ratings and same coaching defense, I believe, as well. Like, every, everything is pretty similar. I believe Tony Hand is, like, is slightly better in certain categories, like coaching fours and offensive skills. I don't think that Matt Becca has anything higher than, like, a 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he didn't have anything higher than a 14 in his coaching ratings. And then self-preservation and tactics are 15. So Tony Hand is slightly better, but honestly, not by much. <laughs> not by much. So we'll see if that does anything. Because to be honest, I was expecting the NCAA championship this year. Like we have a pretty good team. Or we did have a pretty good team. But obviously at this point, we have a different roster. But, you know, I wasn't exactly happy with the way we went out there <laughs> against uh, Bentley. So let's take a look at who we have now. All right, Blake Fiddler. Blake Fiddler has officially joined the roster. We'll see if he stays. I really hope he does for at least one season. Assuming he stays on for this year, then th this is absolutely this is absolutely the year we need to get it done. Because he got Davidson, a four and a half star, Tetaranko, Ross. I mean, we have so many good players, especially on defense. I mean, look at our defensive core right now. Holy moly. <laughs> that's that's impressive. That is a really good top six. In Fiddler, Davidson, Ross, uh, Sioland, Cardona, and Ozilich. The weakest player there is three and a half stars out of those top six. That is a really good defensive core. And then four would not have bad either. I mean, we could use a couple of better wingers, but that's really about it. Now let's see in goal. I mean, you got Bruveris, you got Howitt. We may eventually need a third one if we ever deal with injuries, but for right now, we're good there. All right, now let's simulate up to the Hall of Fame induction since there's not really much to do on July 1st in the... NCAA, and then once we get through that, we'll end things off. And the inductions for the Hockey Hall of Fame are Rod Brindamore, Sergei Gonchar, Chris Pronger, and Ryan Miller. Hmm. So I've just noticed a bug here. I'm not sure if this is new or not. 
I've never personally noticed this, but on the alumni lists page, if we go to drafted alumni from the NHL entry drafts, Lachlan Tetarenko, drafted in 2025 by Anaheim, it says he was drafted in the first round, second overall, but on this page, it says he was drafted third overall. So not a huge bug there, but is something I thought I would point out. And again, I don't know if that is new to this game or if that has been a bug for a while, but that's the, that's certainly the first time I've noticed that. Ooh, Lemashevsky is apparently academically ineligible, and he is definitely not a freshman. I know that. So yeah, we're gonna try to redshirt him. Not willing to redshirt. Oof. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Hopefully he uh, does well elsewhere. So here's our roster going into year number five. You have Bruveris and Howitt in net. On defense, you have Fiddler, Davidson, Ross, Cardona, Ozelinch. D'Alessandro, Dupuy, Stenger, Kroll, Ratty, and Zappo are actually forwards, so I think I might change them back to forwards. And then at forward, you have Tetarenko, Tinling, Lind Fors, Ketanen, Goshsek, Zinchenko, Yuntorp, Izagai, Connors and Kelgard, Smith, Stenman, Risto, Holchak, Brooks, Portillo, Sinkinen, Lundberg, Doucette, Person and Grenier. Anyway, with that all being done, I think we'll end things off here. And the next one, we will start year number five with your Western Michigan Broncos. See you guys then.